Yo, Chuck. What the Chuck is up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to go over Leak Code 26, remove duplicate items from assorted array. You can see we've got a problem statement here, and we just need to return how many unique values there are in this assorted array. And we can actually manipulate and morph the array any way we want, so long as the initial um, original values appear at the start, and then whatever happens at the end doesn't really matter. The crux of this problem is that it must be sort or it must be done in place. So it must be remove the duplicates in place, which implies we cannot create another array to do so. So with that said, let's hop into the code. All right, so you can see I've just copy and pasted the remove duplicates function from leak code, and we've got our first input here. So I'm just going to return the array of numbers that we're gonna pass in. Then I'm gonna console log the remove duplicates function and I'll pass in that first array of sorted numbers. And now I will return this and we just get it back. That's to be expected. Okay, so the first way I'm gonna show you how to do this is by using a swap index. So we're gonna set that swap index equal to one initially. And what this is going to do is I'm going to compare adjacent items. So I'm going to compare nums at index i with nums at index i plus 1. If they do not equal each other, I know that nums at i plus 1 is a unique value. And I'm basically going to swap that with the swap index. And then I'm going to increment the swap index. So we need to make a for loop for this. I'll set i equal to 0. I'm going to set i less than nums.length minus one. The reason I'm saying minus one here is because I'm comparing adjacent items as I go down the array. Eventually I'm going to hit the second to last item here and I'm going to compare it with four, right? So I don't need to go all the way and compare four to undefined, which is what this logic would say if I just said as long as i is less than nums.length. So that's why I'm putting nums.length minus one, and then I'm just going to increment i here. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna compare adjacent items. So I'm gonna say if nums at i does not equal the number following it, so it doesn't equal nums at i plus one, then we need to perform a swap on our swap index. So I'll say nums at swap index equals nums at i plus one. So if I do that and then I return nums, let's see what happens. So it's, it's nothing's really happening except for that first swap. Um, but it's all messed up because we still need to increment the swap index. So Let's do that, increment the swap index. There we go. Okay, so you can see our unique values are placed in order and we're keeping track of how many unique values we have with that swap index variable. But notice we're actually changing the array. The array only has one four in it, but we have two fours present in this array and like the problem statement says, we don't actually care if we screw up the array so long as we get the first items that are unique in sorted order. So this is actually okay. So I'm actually just gonna return the swap index here. And that should give me my answer of five, which is the correct answer in this case. So I'm gonna paste this code into leak code and let's see what happens. Okay, it likes it, good. Let me actually bring this browser. Can I bring that browser window up a little bit? Maybe not, all right. Well, you can see it. Okay, so that one works. Now I wanna show you another way that I actually like better. This is kind of, this can be kind of confusing conceptually with the swap index. Maybe not though, but I think there's an even easier way to do this. And we're gonna start at the end of the array. So I'm gonna start right here and then I'm going to compare uh, the items going down, okay? So what that's gonna look like is we're gonna make a for loop, set i equal to nums.length 
minus one, as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to decrement i. And then from here, like I said, I'm just gonna compare the current item with the uh, preceding item. So I'll say if nums at i is equal to nums at i minus one. So here I'm checking for duplicates, duplicate values. So if this is the case, I'm going to use nums.splice and this method takes a initial starting point, which we want to be i. And then you ask how many times you want to like delete. I want to delete one item. So I'm going to delete i. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to be checking for duplicates. Is four a duplicate of three? No. Is three a duplicate of three? Yes, it is. So I would just delete this three. And this works because now I don't need to manipulate the variable i. It's naturally going to decrement on its own with this for loop. So if I do this and just return nums, whoops, if I return nums here, you can see we're just deleting all those duplicates in place. So we're not making a new array. We're just deleting the items that we don't need. And this is good because it fixes our array to be that, and now we can just return nums.length. And that should give us the k value of five, and it does. Let's try this code in leak code. Pass it in here. Um, it's going kind of slow. <laughs> it's going a little slow, but there you go. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it worked. So it actually did it run faster than the previous one? No, this uh, the swap index actually worked better. So those are two viable options. I kind of like this one better because it feels more intuitive to me. But either or. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If you did, please like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.